a few days ago, I went ahead and put up this response to a tweet that was circulating concerning Austin Steinbart appearing with JFK Jr. I stated the boy in a striped shirt is not Austin Steinbart, and we're talking about this character here. Little did I know. How completely wrong you can be. For all I know, that assumption of mine could still be correct. It's just important to know you shouldn't really reject things out of hand. How completely wrong you can be. So we have this fascinating video, which with an alleged air date in 2007, which shows a man in a striped shirt, the bobble haircut, who many are identifying as Austin Steinbart. Texas Godmother III shows some early pictures of Austin, presumably from his Facebook account. Here's an earlier picture from 2008 that shows Austin with a uh, bob type haircut. So here we have this video uploaded by Wing Commander titled JFK Jr. Alive in 2007 Enhanced Video. The uploader attributes an individual named George who provided a link to this particular video. The individual who begins speaking in this clip is Major General Albert Stubblebine. It's noted that his active duty career spanned 32 years. He recently died February 2017. Mr. Stubblebine goes on to describe specific doubts he has concerning the September 11th attacks. This specifically with regards to airplanes striking into the Pentagon. Starting at about 3.36 in this clip, two characters enter the scene who are culturally very relevant to Q and MAGA. This uploader focuses on JFK Jr., but this other young man is interacting with the alleged JFK Jr. Many speculate that it is Austin. I'll go ahead and play the clip. Made marks on the side of the Pentagon. One person counteracted my theory and said, oh, well, you've got it all wrong. And the reason that it's wrong is that as the airplane came across, <coughs> one uh, wing tipped down and hit the ground and broke off. I said, fine, that's possible. One wing could have broken off. But if I understand airplanes correctly, most airplanes have two wings. I haven't met an airplane with only one wing. I'll go ahead and stop the clip here. As I'm sure you are aware, JFK Jr. passed away at the age of 38 on July 16, 1999. Here's a video of a younger Kennedy at the 1988 Democratic Convention. Playback speed slowed. This is the man in question as possibly being Kennedy still alive. Given JFK Jr.'s age at death, uh, he would have been 46 years old uh, when this video was taken, assuming he lived 2007. So where was the mark for the second wing? Okay, one broke off. There should have been a mark for the second wing. So you get a, get a clear picture of this guy's profile. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. You can appreciate these are very similar looking men. Note the height of the bottom lip from the bottom of the jawline compare here. Note the height of the philtrum underneath the nose, also the pointiness of the nose. Say what would So here's our lateral view of the young man people are saying is Austin Steinbar. I'm gonna focus on the JFK Jr. character for now, but I will be returning to Austin shortly. For this still image you can appreciate some of the features I just mentioned to you. Um, here the lips, the bottom lip is a decent height, appears to be at least uh, four centimeters from the bottom of the jawline. There's also a rather decent height from the uh, upper lip to the nose there. You can appreciate the eyebrows which are thick and wide in this individual's case. You have the dome of the forehead with uh, a little bit less hair. You can call this the forelock zone with temporal recession. We can appreciate some of the anatomical differences here in a lateral view. The jawline of this individual appears to be an underbite. Uh, typically you have like a neutral jawline, underbite, or a little bit of overbite where the jaw juts out. If you look at JFK Jr. here, there's also a bit of an underbite. Uh, this is a, an appropriately receding hairline for an individual who you would guess to be between 46 and 50 years old. Uh, you may appreciate that the ear and the nose is larger in this individual than on this individual. This could possibly be explained uh, by the fact that due to the cartilaginous nature of the materials involved, uh, these body parts tend to grow with age. Uh, the neck is thick and robust for both individuals. 
you see more of this guy's neck is exposed uh, due to a much lower collar line um, than this individual. You see they both have the top portion of the ear partially covered with hair. One potential discrepancy between the two individuals is the brow ridge area, it appears to be larger and eyes more deep set compared to this individual here. Though that said, it's noted that the lighting is completely different in the, between these two shots. With this lighting, there's shadow underneath the brow ridge. I do not think that the brow ridge leads to deeper eye sockets with age, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. Here we have a TV interview of JFK Jr. from 1998. Um, comparing these two images here, you can really appreciate the breadth of the upper face as well as the relative increased height between the bottom of the eyelids and the bottom of the jawline for each of these individuals. They both have a similar long nose. Um, here we have both individuals looking up. The graininess of this footage is not very helpful here. Still, you can appreciate that these two men appear to be very similar. Now we'll go ahead and focus on the Austin character. Our very best shots of this individual um, are the initial lateral shots. Very careful, do not say what. You have a good profile right there. You see exactly how much the nose uh, jets out there. You can see the shape of the dome of the forehead. Uh, you can see that there's a slight underbite. Uh, you can see the sharpness of the jawline. Um, you can also take a look at the angle of the jawline as it approaches the ear there. You can see some detail of the ear, and notably that the earlobe is not very prominent in the shot. And you can also appreciate the bobble haircut. Here is a more recent lateral of Austin. Now compare it to the photo from 2000, well, the image from 2007, uh, immediately you can appreciate that the skin tones are different. However, this difference could still be accounted for by changes in lighting as well as the camera settings. The nose does not appear quite as pointy in this instance as in this one. Um, however, Austin's head is not totally turned to the side as in, in this case. Um, it is clear that both these individuals have a larger full defined nose, so you can't really disqualify these being the same person just based on the shape of the nose. Um, the jawline is sharp for both individuals, which um, speaks towards them possibly being the same. The ear height, as you see, is level with the eye in both cases, so you can't really make a disqualification based on ear height, as you could in a video I'd done previously on Derek Chauvin going back to the, um, the Floyd death that spawned so many riots months ago. Now let's take a look at this lateral view in slow motion. You can see the distinctness of the lines of the haircut that provide a lot of space around the back portion of the ear. Looking at this photo from the Canada album from 2009, you can appreciate Austin's bobble haircut that he donned at that time. As well as the ear, notice how the ear seems to come poke out a little bit before tapering down like that. The hair color on display between both images is very similar. A member I commented about the shape of Austin's ear here. Just look at this particular ear shape as this character uh, turns his head um, to the right. This shot you're about to see for many is considered more or less the money shot, establishing that this is somehow Austin Steinbart. So you have that profile there, which is remarkably similar to this profile. They're very distinct, long face, heavy brow ridge profiles. In this somewhat silly photo, also from the Canada trip, you can appreciate the shadow that's beneath the eyes here. You can compare that there. It may be difficult to appreciate due to the graininess of this particular shot, but the ears do appear to come out 
and protrude a little bit more. Um, you know, as you can see there, this little protrusion there. Now, one additional thing I would like if the video quality were high enough for me to see is you see here in this photo, Austin has a sort of wide, impish looking mouth. Um, it's really hard to note that detail because this particular video is just so grainy. What? In this particular still, as he's turning around, you can sort of appreciate that he has a big mouth, but it's just uh, not entirely clear. So you can see it's sort of impish looking. By impish, I mean like the upper lip is doing this like kind of like curve at the corner. You can see how it's like curving a little bit. Okay, that's like the impish look. And comparing these two shots, just note the relation of the hairline uh, to the upper brow ridge. Um, so unlike the JFK Jr. case, uh, there's a shorter height between the top of the hairline and the upper brow ridge. These, this appearance is similar between both these images. The eyes are high set and perched on peaks, uh, characteristic of astrologic Capricorns. The colors this boy has chosen to wear are also appropriate for that particular sign, the, the black, the white, and the gray. Hypertellurism is this problem where the eyes are spaced a little bit too widely apart. Something I noticed about Austin is that, to the contrary, his eyes seem to be more closely together. And I can say the same for this person here. This is the, the best still for you to appreciate the ear. See how it just comes out a little bit and then slopes down. So it just comes out a little bit there and just kind of slopes down. There's a little point right in the midsection. It's very interesting that both of these individuals seem to have that type of anatomy. Looking at all this evidence at once, it is very difficult for me to rule out that this is Austin Steinbart. Here you can appreciate that the individual who may be Austin appears very similar in height to the person we think may be JFK Jr. Both men have a bit of a hunched back and are stooping forward a bit. It's known that JFK Jr., at least per this Google finding, was six feet one inch tall. I believe Austin is about six feet three inches tall or six feet two inches tall. So the first question I have is why would two men, each with their own mythos, with some secret claims to fame, why would these individuals appear in the same dated video from over a decade ago? Did the universe somehow want this to be found in order to drive endless speculation? Or did the universe want this to be found in order to help connect threads of mildly increased assurance for those following all of the breadcrumbs that a massive coordinated push to change the world for the better is occurring, which requires reality manipulation and some alteration of events of the past. To give you an example of what I mean, here's a video from the Affected Collective YouTube channel that describes a potential reality manipulation where CERN was able to create an old music video in a sense advertising themselves. This video with its own interesting anomalies. Illustrate it a little better for you. So you see this person standing back here in the white robe looking away. Uh, that's weird, but there's this other person, question mark, who looks like they're in a blue dress and maybe even has a dog with them. Uh, I've been getting really weird anomalies. Anyway, watch the person disappear. The body disappears into like nothing. 
So let's watch it again in slow mo. It's bizarre. <laughs> do, 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 Open up your mind, you will receive thoughts throughout time, prepare to receive transmission. I wager that this particular song was produced under a significant otherworldly inspiration, or possibly it was inserted into our timeline artificially. So is this video also an insert into our timeline to prepare us for better things to come? We will see.